say that uh, Christ Jesus wasn't crucified. He never died. And how can we prove this? Because this is the only thing which is actually, <clears throat> excuse me, protecting me or trying to retard my progress to become a Muslim. All my students, I'm sure some of them are here, they know of my ambition. But my aim and the truth is what I'm looking for. Because I believe a day will come I must stand by the judgment throne to actually testify all what I've done on earth. But how am I going to find that truth? Because it has been told that we've, we, the Christian, believe that Christ died and rose to show to the world that after death there is life. This is the proof. But if I can just have that, hallelujah, I will turn tonight to be a Muslim. I prove this to you. The brother said now if he can be made certain that this crucifixion didn't take place, he is prepared to accept Islam tonight. Let us see. Man says, I want to find the truth. But generally, they close their eyes, they say, I want to see the sun. And I don't see the sun because his eyes are closed. And he doesn't want to open the eyes. He's terrified to open the eyes. Nobody can help him. No million suns can help him to see the light if he keeps his eyes closed. But now, if he opens himself to say, let's have a look. What does the book say? The book says, Luke chapter 24, verse 36, that Jesus returns to that upper room where they had the Last Supper. The Christian knows what I'm talking about. Before his alleged crucifixion, Jesus went to that upper room in Jerusalem and with his disciples they had the Last Supper. So after his alleged crucifixion, Jesus returns after three days. And he goes into this room and his disciples are there Ten of them, ten of them are there. And he wishes them in Hebrew, Shalom Aleichum, same as Salam Aleichum in Arabic. When he said, peace be unto you, Salam Aleichum, his disciples were terrified. So I'm asking my Christian brothers, why were, he, why were they terrified? They were affrighted because they thought he was a spirit. Am I quoting correctly your scripture? Yeah, yeah. Yes. So I'm asking, did he look like a spirit? Did he look like a ghost, a spook? They said no. Then I said, why should they think the man is a spirit when he didn't, didn't look like one? Christian gets puzzled. Because they say he, they thought that he was a spirit. So I said, you see, the reason is that the disciples of Jesus, his Hawariyun, they had heard from hearsay people talking that the master, Jesus, was hanged on the cross. They had heard from hearsay, people talking, that he had given up the ghost, you know, that his spirit had come out, he had died. They had heard from hearsay, people talking, that now he's dead and buried for three days. All the knowledge is from hearsay, people talking, because Mark chapter 14, verse 50, he tells us that at the most critical juncture in the life of Jesus, all his disciples forsook him and fled. All. So I'm asking, does all mean all in your language, you English man? He said yes. So they were not there. All the knowledge from what they heard. So on hearsay knowledge, if you know about a man who is dead and buried for three days, you expect him to be stinking in his grave. Am I right? After three days, the man should be stinking in his grave. Such a person you see, naturally you are terrified. Because you think he's a spook, a ghost, a spirit. So Jesus wants to assure them that he is not what they are thinking. They are thinking he has come back from the dead, resurrected. So he says, Unzuru ila yadayya wa rijalayya. He says, Behold my hands and my feet. Inni ana huwa. I am the same fellow man. What's wrong with you fools? Can't you see? Inni, most certainly I, ana huwa. Husuni wanzuru. Say, handle me and see. For a spirit has no flesh and bones, as you see me have. And they felt him. And they believed not for joy. Means they were overjoyed. And wondered, what happened man? We thought the man was dead and buried. So he says, to assure them further, that this is not what they are thinking. He says, Have you got here anything to eat? 
فَنَاوَلُوهُ جُزْءًا مِّن سَمَكٍ وَشَيْئًا مِّن شَهَدِ عَسَلٍ فَأَخَزَا وَأَكَلَا قُدَّامَهُمْ And they gave him a piece of broil fish and a honeycomb and he took it and he ate in the very sight to prove what? There is a ghost, there is a spook, there is a spirit. What is he proving? I am a same fellow man, damn fools, what are you afraid of me for? This is what he's proving to them. He's telling them that he's not what you are thinking. And yet he said, look, he is. He said, he's not a spirit. You say, he is. Amazing. Amazing sense of logic, reasoning. The man is telling you, I'm not. You say, he is. Jesus says, I'm not God. I'm a servant of God. You say, no, he's God. Jesus says, I don't know about the Yawmul Qiyamah. They say, no, he knows. Jesus says, I can't do everything of my own self. He said, no, he can do everything. I say, what's wrong with you people? The man is telling you, I don't know. The man is telling you, I'm the same fellow. And you say, no, he's a spirit. He says, he's not a spirit, you say, he's a spirit. I want to know whether you understand English. I don't know Ghanaian, as I told you in the Ghanaian language. Okay? A spirit has no flesh and bones. Why does he tell you a spirit has no flesh and bones? Look, it's an axiomatic truth. Everybody agrees. Whether Hindu, Jew, atheist, agnostic, spirit has no flesh and bones. So why must he tell you that? Because you are thinking that he is. He said he is not that. And he's eating broiled fish and honeycomb. Do resurrected bodies eat broiled fish and honeycomb? Do they? That when we wake up, Yomul Kiyama, everybody eating broiled fish and honeycomb? Is that what it is? So what is this? The man is telling you he is not, and you say, no, he is. I said, this is this. The Quran discussed. Jesus said, seeing they see not, hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. The Quran confirms that. It's a summum bukmun umyun for whom lahir jiun. Deaf, dumb, and blind, they will not return to the path. If you want to see, the signs are there. This booklet is here. I don't know whether you got this crucifixion or crucifixion. Have you got this? Yes. Now, look, man, the whole thing. There isn't a Christian born. Look, brother, brother, listen. I'm, I'm offering your mighty Christian giants in America. Meeting in the Madison Square Garden at my expense. You get me Jerry Falwell, or Pat Robertson, or Billy Graham, and I will give you, 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 $10,000 present. If you can make any one of those to agree to discuss this with me in America in Madison Square Garden, I will give you as a present $10,000.